doing is computing the cohomology of the moduli space of holomorphic bundles of rank n and degree k. Uh, so really, it should be semi-stable bundles. Uh, so that's what this is. It's the semi-stable locus mod the complex gauge group um, for when n and k are co-prime. So this is, in the case of n and k are co-prime, this is the same thing as the stable locus. Um, so things might be a little crazy because I'm just going to state like a whole bunch of theorems that I'm not going to prove and we're going to, have to take on faith, but I'm going to talk a little bit about how they fit together to get us the cohomology of this space. So let's just state all of our theorems right away. I'll number them because I'll need to refer to them in a bit. Um, so, so the GC equivariant cohomology of the heart of Narasimhan strata. Uh, so I think I denoted these C sub mu of E, where mu is some type vector. Uh, so some list of rational numbers of the, of like length, the rank of E. Um, so this equivariant cohomology has no torsion. Okay, so here's another one. Um, so that's zero, E zero all the way to ER, be the Hardiner Simhan filtration. of a holomorphic bundle E, or of a holomorphic structure. Um, and then fix a smooth splitting of the filtration So we get uh, decompositions as smooth bundles of E is some direct sum of smooth subbundles di. And then this EI is, or I can just say equal. Uh, so j less than i dj. OK, so then the, the GC equivariant cohomology of the strata, so mu is the type of E, or of the holomorphic structure. Um, and then this is. They, they, they're in the paper, they prove this rational cohomology, but it's fine. So this is isomorphic to the tensor product from i equals one to r of cohomology of, and I'll explain what that is in a second. Oh, okay, let's move this. of the semi-stable locus of holomorphic structures on these sub-bundles di. Thank you. So where, oops. I use this notation gc of di to be uh, automorphisms. I should say smooth automorphisms of di. Okay, um, and then this is like the graded tensor product. Uh, so, yeah. Question. Yeah. These smooth splittings are, are they compatible with the complex structure? Uh, no, so like the DI aren't even holomorphic vector bundles necessarily. But they're just 
complex oh. vector bundles. They they are complex vector bundles, but they're not not necessarily holomorphic. Cool. Everything in this decomposition is smooth. So I think. Yeah. Yeah. Question, Jeffrey. So yep. like this, like like this Harlan Riemann filtrations. What happens when you like? If I think about like the modular space of holomorphic structures on E, then like what happens when you like vary it? Like that's whole, that's the whole stability on wall crossing phenomenon, right? Like you have a bunch of walls. If you cross a wall, then some maybe like some sub bundles won't be holomorphic anymore. Then like the stability change is that what happens? Like this other behavior that we're seeing here. Um, that sounds correct. Uh, I don't, I'm trying to think of maybe a more precise result I can point you towards, but yeah, like I'm, like for example, if you feel, like if you have like E and the holomorphic structure on E that you have this HN filtration, then in an open neighborhood of that, unless it's somewhat stable. Oh, okay, actually, I, I do have something I can say that will probably explain it to you. So, so you know, like how for a holomorphic vector bundle, the infinitesimal, like the, the tangent space of the space of complex, like the infinitesimal deformation space is like the first double cohomology of ND. Yeah, yeah. So it's a similar thing where like the, the normal direction to one of these strata is going to be the first double cohomology of some quotient bundle of ND. Okay. Uh, and, and it's precisely the automorphism or the endomorphisms of E that don't preserve the, the filtration. And that's the normal direction. Ah, okay. I see, so, I see. So yeah, basically so, you're forcing one of them to get out, like not before. Yeah, before. so like ah. you're, you're varying the filtration. Ah, okay. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So yeah, is so it like a co-dimensional one phenomenon? You know, like um, yeah, you kind of expect co-dimension. What What do you mean by that? I, I don't exactly know, but like normally in wall crossing, you have like a strata, and then you just like like as you vary, it's like it's an open condition. Then you like you only change the strata you're in when you hit something that's co-dimensional one. Co-dimensional one. Ah. Um. So like there are some things. Leon, do you maybe condition. mean? Do you mean like wall crossing in the space of stability conditions? Yeah, yeah. Or in this, yeah. So in this case, the H. Uh, the, like, the thing is, the thing there's is, there's only for one stability condition involved. For here. bundles on a curve, there's only like one. I mean, there's no wall crossing. It's boring. There's only this one stability condition up to like scalar, like multiplication. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe the question is not asking a great way. You, you can continue. Thank you, Jeffrey. Okay. This the, this, this, the thing you say makes like. That the question you ask is a good one for like not curves but higher dimensional varieties. Okay. Okay. So I have a small question. Mm -hmm. um, so in this statement of this theorem two, yeah, uh, am I correct in saying that you didn't actually use the splitting? Um, so I need to use I need to use these uh, the semi-stable locus of holomorphic structures on these smooth subbundles. But we could like take the quotient bundle. I mean, we didn't use the like the actual splitting, like the actual map from the d i to the e. Ah, okay. Um, I see. That's true. But, but just, um, just in the in the sure proof didn't in, miss in 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 uh, so I guess in the proof of like essentially this statement. Um, they do actually fix splitting, and then they do some algebraic topology yoga to replace certain groups and spaces with homotopy equivalent ones. So, so they use it in the proof, but I mean, just in to the understand statement, the statement so much, of yeah. this theorem. Yeah, okay. Not so much. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. So, yeah, this is maybe phrased a bit confusing if you want to. But in, in the proof, they do do this thing, and then you do some algebraic topology yoga to replace stuff with homotopy equivalent stuff. Thanks. Okay. okay, so theorem three is so I'm gonna let K mu uh, be the real co-dimension. Uh, is that you typing, Arun? Oh shit, I'm not muted, I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, my Zoom has actually been really poorly frozen, so I can't mute myself. So if you could do that for me, that would be helpful. Oh, okay. All right, he's muted now, I think. No, he's not. Uh, I also can't mute him. I'm not sure what's up. Oh, maybe if I make him not a host. 
Can I remove him for a Can you remove him as a host, Zach? You should probably do that. I haven't been able to do anything useful this whole lecture. Okay, one second. No, no, I, I can't do that. You have to do it. Okay, okay. I'm really sorry about the distraction. Uh, can I remove you and put you back? Oh, you're a guest now. Wow, I can't mute him. Uh, that's interesting. Okay, I have a solution. Oh, I guess you could just turn off his mic on his computer, if that's what he's doing. OK, well, it went away, so. All right, back to uh, everything. All right, sorry about that. Um, right, so the third theorem, so like k sub mu be the real co-dimension of c sub mu inside of the whole space of holomorphic structures. So it's theorem that it is finite co-dimension. Um, and then, so I'm gonna use the notation P sub T of GC of some space M to be the, denote the GC equivariant. Uh, Poincaré series for a GC space M. So, for example, so so more explicitly, this is defined to be this polynomial and this variable t, uh, which is the sum of i, the dimension of the ith equivariant GC equivariant cohomology group. Uh, and then this t to the ith power. Um, I is an index and not the complex number. Sorry about that. OK, so, so the Poincaré series for the whole space is equal to a sum over all the strata of t to the k sub mu times the Poincaré series for that strata. So this comes from the Morse theory ideas that I mentioned last time. Um, this is essentially like what you get when you have a perfect Morse function and your Morse inequalities become equalities and then you can talk about the cohomology of the total space in terms of like some weighted sum essentially of the cohomologies of the uh, strata based on some co-dimension idea. Okay, so another thing we'll take on faith. Let G be the genus of the Riemann surface. We're talking about uh, the Riemann surface that we're working over. Um, so then the Poincaré series. So this is just the ordinary cohomology of, I should say, BGC. So this is just the cohomology of classifying space, it's this formula, one plus t to the 2k minus one, 2g, uh, one minus t to the 2n times, oops, times the product from k equals one to n minus one, one minus t to the two k squared. Okay, so here's some remarks on the implications of these theorems that we're all going to take on faith. So, one tells us that we may work rationally if we care. 
because there's no torsion, so any result for rational cohomologies tells us about integral cohomology. Um, so two tells us that we can compute the cohomology or equivariant cohomology. of some strata in terms of the equivariant cohomology um, of the semi-stable strata of lower rank bundles. So it's like a gives us a sort of inductive procedure for, for uh, computing equivariant cohomology. So if we can do it for like rank one bundles, then maybe that helps us with rank two bundles, and then that helps us with rank three bundles and so on. Sorry, Jeffrey, can I ask a quick question about your theorem four? Uh, yes. Wait, so the N is the rank of the bundle, right? N is the rank of the bundle, K, uh, oh shoot. And the degree- uh, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't have indexed with K. I'm sorry. K is the degree of okay, the okay. bundle. Yeah, that makes that's better. Cool. Thanks. Uh, that was yeah, bad choice of notation. It is all that one? But uh, I mean, the the degree doesn't pop up in the formula, right? You're just using that. Uh, I do not think. Training. Yeah, I don't think the degree pops up in the formula. I should double check because now I might have some of those Ks might actually be Ks, but I don't think so. Okay. I do not believe the degree shows up in the in the formula. So that's kind of surprising me. I will double check. But I mean I I, I know for a fact that of what, uh, the bundle. The bundle E. So this this G uh, C is Yeah. Yeah. Um I, I, I just yeah. Sorry, go ahead. All right, I always I, I, I think I'm, I know for a fact that there's like an almost natural isomorphism between um, rank n degree k and rank n degree k plus n. Uh -huh. So if, if k popped up, it should only like appear sort of mod n, but it might be that sort of... Uh, uh, yes. Speaking this, like, you know, this is just a uh, topological type. It might be that whole premise all it really sees, uh, but I don't know. Uh, I see. Yeah, I think what you said rings a bell. Um, uh, I don't really think, for all intents and purposes, I don't think the formula is too important. It's more like how the formulas fit together. You can probably look up the correct, if I wrote down the wrong formula, then you can just repeat it's, the it's stuff fine. I said. I, I, yeah. I guess I was just surprised that the degree doesn't pop up at all. Yeah, that is kind of surprising. I'll, I'll double check. Um, I'm kind of new to this idea of a Poincaré series. Could you, could you just say real briefly like why we would care about considering this sort of thing? I mean, it's just the co it's just the dimensions of the cohomology and you just attach it to a polynomial or a, seri a, a power series. D does it basically function like Euler characteristic does where we sort of, you know, it, it sort of behaves well for cohomological arguments and we use it sort of formally? Uh, I mean, obviously it has more meaning than that, but. I mean, yeah, I think it's just like, for example, like if you take like a tensor product of yeah. th those things, it's, you just take the product of their polynomials or okay, of the I, series. I, I, I think so I get you. Yeah. It, it, it's it's kind of just a nice bookkeeping device from my experience. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, otherwise, like writing down like a sum of demand, like uh, this formula would be like kind of hard to write in terms of just cohomology rings, right? It's like maybe slightly simpler to just talk about the series themselves. Okay, so three. Um, well, this is just a nice formula. Um, and four. What is four? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, so. We know 
that the equivariant cohomology of the whole space is just the ordinary cohomology of the classifying space uh, because C of E is contractible. Uh, so it tells us that we actually just know what this cohomology is. Uh, so if we can compute this, uh, so the equivariant cohomology for all the strata. Um, so I'm just going to omit the coefficients for compactness, but you can just think it's Z or Q or something. Uh, so if we can compute this cohomology for all but the semi-stable strata or the stable strata in our case, but Then, so in particular, like the semi-stable locus is one of these strata. It just corresponds to like the trivial filtration because E is already semi-stable. Uh, then we can compute each C the semi-stable locus. So this is kind of like using this formula right here. So we know that we know this part, and we can if we can compute all of these except for one, then we know the last one. Okay. Um, so I do have in the notes a computation. Of these codimensions, k mu. Um, it just uses some complex geometry and some in Riemann Ra, and then not much else. Um, but it's kind of long, and I don't think I'll be able to get through it in time. So um, I'm just going to refer you to the notes if you want to figure out how to compute them. Um, so, but I'll tell you what they are anyway. So, suppose the slope of di is ki over ni, then uh, so k mu is equal to two times the sum over i greater than or equal to j and i k i minus k j and j plus n i n j times g minus one. Um, that's the formula. Okay, now one more thing to say is, suppose we achieved our goal and we computed this, this equivariant cohomology of the semi-stable strata. Uh, so this isn't exactly what we wanted. Uh, because the GC action isn't free. Um, so the goal is to replace GC with a group. Acting freely. on the semi-stable locus. Uh, excuse me, maybe you talked about this in the last lecture, I don't remember, but the, the action of, of uh, GC on, on the semi-stable bundles, does it have finite stabilizers or? Um, so that's the next proposition I'll actually say. Ah, okay. So Good. yeah, um, proposition, uh, the stabilizer, of a stable homomorphic structure. So stable is equal to semi-stable in our situation. Is uh, the central C star, uh, the C star inside of this. So it's just scaling 
all the fibers by the same complex number. Um, the proof is in the notes and um, it's not too hard either. You just mess around with degrees and then it works out, I think. Um, so again, I'm playing things kind of fast and loose today, but I kind of want to show how all these things piece together. Okay, so as a result, so this quotient, uh, this quotient group acts freely. So our actual goal is to compute this equivariant cohomology. And this will get us what we're looking for. Okay, so some algebraic topology, more, uh, more algebraic topology yoga uh, lets us replace this. Uh, with this uh, one called G bar, which is just the, the gauge group uh, mod not UI mod U1, so the central U1. Um, essentially, this comes from the fact that you can replace the complex gauge group with the other with the ordinary gauge group because the the quotient is like the space of Hermitian metrics on E, which is contractible, and then you kind of do the same thing here. Okay, so we should understand, or we should compute for ourselves what the cohomology of the classifying space of this group is. So we can talk about equivariant cohomology here. So a theorem that we'll use uh, several, or at least twice, Okay, at least, so is Leray Hirsch. Uh, so here's the general statement. So let E to X be a fiber bundle. This model fiber F. Such that the inclusion of any fiber into the total space induces a surjection. By pullback around the cohomology of the clip. Oops. Sorry. Uh, so pullback induces a uh, surjection on rational cohomology. Uh, then get this. is just the, the cohomology of the total space is just the tensor product of the cohomologies. So we want to apply this, uh, apply Leray Hirsch to this vibration. So BU1 is the fiber uh, BG is the total space, and then the base space is BG bar. Um, so this comes coming from uh, the short exact sequence. One goes to U1, goes to G, goes to G bar, goes to one. So some uh, it's the Functorial property that we have. Okay, so we need to show that it satisfies the conditions. So consider, um, I'm going to give you a map from oops, from our, our gauge group to U1. Um, 
given by uh, taking some x in our Riemann surface and restricting a group element to this fiber EX and taking determinants. Taking the, ter the determinant. Uh, so this is a group homomorph homomorphism from our gauge group to U1 and then consider the composition, so this is the inclusion of U1 and the gauge group going to U1. Um, and then this is a degree N map. Uh, therefore, the induced map on classifying spaces, so the U1, so that's just CP infinity, um, back to itself, is multiplication by N. So in particular, that's an isomorphism on rational cohomology, which implies that the pullback here uh, has to be a surjection on rational cohomology, has to induce a Surjection on rational cohomology. Uh, this implies the Ray Hirsch applies. Uh, and what this gives us in terms of Poincare polynomials is that or series, I should say, because is that the, uh, the, the series for this group G bar is equal to this, the series for G times one minus T squared. Um, so what Leray Hirsch actually gets you is you have to move this to the other side uh, over here and then use the fact that one over one minus T squared is the series for CP infinity, but then we just multiply it over and then it gives us what we want. Okay, so that's simple enough. The next thing to do is, well, okay. Now let M be a G bar space. Um, so the group home, the quotient map from G to G bar makes M a G space as well. Um, okay, so you can show that this associated bundle fits into the pole back pullback diagram. So here's the diagram. So this is the pullback of some uh, fiber, fiber bundle of model fiber M along the map BG to BG bar induced by the quotient map. Um, again, since these spaces are only well-defined up to homotopy equivalence, you sometimes just play a little fast and loose with what serves as a model for what, but this is true. And then Furthermore, one can show that the this map right here is 
is a BU1 bundle. Um, right, uh, giving us, so I'll just copy this guy right here. And then I'll just add a BU1 here. So the bottom map is the one coming from the inclusion of U1 into G, and then this one is coming from the inclusion of some fiber. And then from this diagram, we can deduce, one can deduce that this fiber bundle satisfies the conditions for Lurie Hirsch. So we get that the G-equivariant cohomology is isomorphic to the ordinary cohomology of BU1 tensor the Jiguar equivariant cohomology. So again, in terms of Poincare series, what this ends up being is that the Poincare series of this space is just equal to one minus T squared times the Poincare, the G equivariant Poincare series. In the same state of the So we've replaced our group G or GC with a nicer group G bar, and then which does have a free action. So that lets us compute the cohomology. And now we know how to understand it in terms of the equivariant cohomology that we know how to compute. Or in theory, we know how to compute anyway. So in theory, this is all we need. Um, so to show how it fits together, just consider the case n equals one, or n, sorry, n equals two, k equals one. Um, so I'm going to work through this example in the last 10 minutes, 15 minutes or so. And then it should show, it should uh, kind of illuminate how everything pieces together. So I'm just going to take inventory of all the facts we'll need again. So this is mostly restating what I said at the beginning, but let's just do it. So in our case, so this is the rank two degree one case. Um, so if you just plug into our formula, this should get us one plus T to the two G, one plus T cubed to the two G. Again, the precise formulas uh, I may or may not get something wrong. I think it's more about the relationship between them than the precise formulas themselves. Um, okay, so, and then we also have that this, so this, remember that this is, a, this is the same thing as, this because C of E is contractible. Uh, and then this is equal to the product over I of these Poincaré series. Um, so one more. So these, the series for the strata is equal to, uh, wait, did I write the wrong one? Uh, okay, sorry. This is supposed to go here. And this is supposed to be equal to this thing that looks like it came from Morse theory. And then four in our case, our co-dimension 
we have our codimension formula. I K J minus K I N J plus N I N J times G minus one. So these are the formulas we'll need. Okay, so first let's identify the possible harder neurosimhan types. Okay, so first case, E is semi-stable. Are stable again since two and one are coprime. Uh, so then the filtration is just zero and then E. The type is just a pair of rational numbers, it's one half, comma, one half. Because E is degree one and rank two. So its slope is one half. And we repeat it twice because E is rank two. Okay, otherwise, um, the filtration is zero L and E for some line bundle. For some line bundle L with the slope of L, which in this case is just equal to the degree of L, because L is a line bundle, larger than the slope of E, uh, which is one half. Uh, furthermore, from additivity in exact sequences, uh, the degree of the quotient bundle E mod L is equal to one minus the degree of L. So the, the type here, or our Simhan type, is just degree of L and then one minus the degree of L. So for some convenience, let C sub R of E to note the strata of type R plus one minus R. So fact three, um, so again, it's this one right here, expressing the series for some strata. Uh, so this out. So it's the G equivariant series for the strata C sub R. It's going to be equal to the product of this series for the semi-stable locus of L times the series for the semi-stable locus of E mod L. Okay, so since L e mod, and E mod L are line bundles, any uh, holomorphic structure is stable. So we, we have that the semi-stable locus is just the whole space. Uh, and likewise for E mod L. And this tells us, so this series is just equal to the ordinary series of the classifying space of this gauge group for the line bundle. Uh, and the same for E mod L. Um, so in particular, these two 
the Poincare series for both of these gauge groups are going to be the same because they're both line bundles. Right, so I guess this goes back to Sebastian's thing. I don't think the degree does come into this because these end up being the same. Um, so eventually this gets us. Right, so this is what I was saying. So this, uh, so we're actually plugging everything into this form, or all the way up here. We're using this formula right here for a line bundle specifically. Um, and what this is is just. Uh, one plus t to the two g over one minus t squared is what it ends up being. And then using four, so this is just our um, co-dimension formula. Uh, the co-dimension of the set strata c sub r is equal to four r plus two g. Okay, so now we put everything together. Um, so this is the series for the classifying space of, so this is the Poincare series for BG. So what this is equal to is it's going to be, so we're going to split out the, the series for the semi-stable locus because that's the one we're interested in. And we want to isolate it. Uh, plus this infinite sum of t to the co-dimension, so 4 plus 2g uh, times this, so 1 plus t to the 2g one minus t squared, and then we have to square it all because we have one coming from L and one coming from E mod L. Okay, some manipulations and rearranging. That this Poincare series to the semi-stable locus is equal to this formula right here, so one plus t the G. So all you really do is you take a geometric series and then move everything to the other side is what I'm doing between these. So 1 plus t cubed to 2g minus t to the 2g, 1 plus t to the 4g. They should all be over 1 minus t to the 4, 1 minus t squared. And then using the relationship between G equivariant and G bar equivariant. Cohomology. So I think this is just dividing by like one minus T squared. Uh, completes the computation. So Hopefully that gets you an idea of how all these theorems fit together to help you compute this Poincare series. And uh, I think I'll stop here. So this is the last one. Thanks to everyone for coming. Uh, if you have any questions, just feel free to ask. Thank you. <laughs> Great job, Jeffrey.
Yeah, this is great. Good job, Jeffrey. Thank you. So do you know what's the difference if you take, say, stable instead of same, like if you're in the not co-prime case? Uh, I not thought about that case very much, so I don't think so. Um, yeah, I don't know. Okay, cool. Also, a thing, maybe I don't know too much about it, but most cases when they're doing this genus is greater than two, and then the T has a separate paper for elliptic curves. So maybe that case is different, but it seems like everything here still works for genus one. But maybe like stability is weird. Did you ever, ex I mean, did G greater than one ever explicitly show up in, the, in this part? Um, so they did, okay, yeah, okay, I see. It has to do with the thing about identifying bundles with like representations of some central extension of the fundamental group. Um, it's not the same in genus one, I think, because the fundamental group is a BLA. Okay. Like, I, I mean, think you are often different between. I, I think you used the, yeah, you used the case that the universal cover is, or no, you don't need that. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, the things are always different. It's a little bit of a mystery to me. Yeah, but presumably something about like hyperbolic versus flat makes a difference somewhere. Yeah, thank you, Jeffrey. Those are great talks. Yeah. Thanks. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. I remember way back on like the first day, um, you said something about Hermitian Yang Mills. Right. As like some kind of like, that's the most natural higher dimensional extension of these ideas. Or it's at least one of them. Okay. There's a lot, or I mean like the mini course Sebastian's teaching is also a natural extension of these ideas. Well, that's true. But it's the same dimension, at least, right? Or yeah, it's still over a Riemann surface. Um, so I'm wondering, like, is there? I don't know if it's that, but like, is there higher dimensional examples of this kind of thing where you have uh, some kind of uh, functional, uh, and you look at its critical points? Um, like we use the Yang Mills functional and then that leads to studying holomorphic vector bundles. Is that what happens in the this other story? In Hermitian, Hermitian Yang Mills? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know exactly the story, but I do know that it becomes complicated because you can't consider only bundles. You have to start talking about sheaves um, in the higher dimensional case. And I also know, yeah, but it's sort of the same thing where like the existence of special metrics on your bundle. So in our case, it's like the existence of special connections or yeah, special connections on our um, bundle or this existence of special metrics on our bundles related to some sort of stability condition on the holomorphic structure. Um, if that was the question you were asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that makes sense. Yeah, um, another another direction where like these ideas of like stability is like stability, is some condition for existence of like special metrics or special like metric structures is like case stability for like Fano varieties. So I think this was like recent work of like Donaldson, Song, and Sun, where like there's this notion of case stability for like the existence of Kaler Einstein metrics on Fano varieties. Um, and this was like original, this essentially came from the idea 
like I think Yao thought that like stability should play the role. Like a similar thing to slope stability should help you find Kaler Einstein metrics for fan varieties. So it's inspired by the slope stability idea. Is that is that the same idea where you have uh, um, they it, to bundles? Uh, and it's more complicated. Metrics on them. It, it's something about like I don't know it very well, but you, they tried really hard to like reverse engineer a stability condition that would work, and it ends up being something about like something called test configurations, and it's kind of involved in the definition from what I've seen. 